Alright, welcome back, Eastern Investigations. Last time, we talked to, uh... We talked to Detective Bad a lot about Faraday and everything. And now we're getting the evidence from the trial. And also we have a question on our hands. And that is how, how the knife was brought into the courthouse. And we don't ha really have anything knife-shaped. Besides... Besides that? I mean, that's fairly... I mean, there's also a pen. Could it be the pen? I don't think so. It's not Grudge's key that Mr. Freddy mentions in his organizer. It's how the knife was brought into the courthouse. That didn't make any sense, now, Zedgeworth. Hm. I just need to look a bit closer, Francisco, to see what I mean. Don't the color and ornamentation in the key's hand remind you of anything? They do remind you of the knife. Very good. Both the Grudge's key in this photo and the murderous knife. With this very unique design on their handles. Furthermore, even though Sferde mentioned the Argatsu's key, the only other object we found at the crime scene was the knife. You'll see what you mean to say. It appears that you finally caught up. And yes, I do mean to say that these two events are in fact one and the same. But that's impossible! Even if that is what you believe, we should still be investigate this possibility. Now then, let's just examine the knife in a bit more detail. This weapon is used to come to Faraday. I know when the blade itself both have beautiful designs and work into them. Look, there's even a flower shape design in this gold section here. If that had been used as a tool for murder, I'd want it for myself. It needs to be drawn to the most elements. Too bad it's mine to give. Oh. Oh, that's just looking at that again. Now what I'm trying to look at. There's something at the bottom. Oh! That was... okay. I can't believe it turned into a key. I think there was such a trick to this thing. The weapon used to give us Fred was actually the key the Argratsu store. This piece of information is more critical than anything we've learned up till now. Hmm. Frankly, I'm shocked. Here's Fred, I only mentioned the key expert of this piece of evidence as organizer. Also, even he had no idea the key was hiding a blade inside. But if that's true, then only someone who knew about the key to the knife, key to knife trick would have killed Mr. Faraday. Even among law enforcement, the key was top secret. Looking for someone who knew even more about the key than Mr. Faraday. I mean, the only person it could be is the one who sent the key in the first place. The great thief Yagratsu. Maybe Mr. Rell really was the Igaratsu. He was the one who killed Mr. Faraday. Isn't that one possible scenario? No, not really, especially since Mr. Faraday was absolutely convinced that Mr. Rell was not the Igaratsu. Besides, as the bad said earlier. But when we questioned Mr. Rell about what was sent along with the, wit with the white card, Rell had no idea what it was. I see. Alright then, I guess the one who knows to find this key is someone else and. That person is the really got Karatsu. Hmm, seeing the key to solve this key is really the key to solving this case. There's also a folder here. Took a quick look through these documents where the trial started. I was seeing that for the opportunity to skim it. Hmm, suppose I should explain it to you then. Yes, you should. Perfectly in an entirety, if you please. Night of the September 8th, an embassy staff member was killed in front of the embassy. The Zemmer died of shock doing to be shot in the heart. Mac Rill was brought in that night as a suspect, thoroughly questioned, because the murder weapon was found on him, for which he arrested for them on the spot. Some sort of a man, that's what he was. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps... He was... for the evidence was the only piece of incriminating evidence we had. 
This role is cut in the act on the film by a security camera. It was even a bigger simple thing than I thought. I can't believe I didn't notice a security camera. The opening name was too scary, so it was very well designed. Maybe some may not have been aware that there was a camera in the area. So have you seen the contents of the video for yourself? Yes, Farron's video was security camera took. It was played during the trial of Mr. Faraday. Clearly identified Mr. Rell on it. Even the sound of the gun jar was crystal clear. So the footage includes sound, huh? I don't think I'd ever want to see the moment of someone's death in real life. Me neither. That's odd. I'm sure one piece of evidence. A piece that's missing is a surveillance video that's played in court. A surveillance video? I got a piece of evidence just disappear. Where did it go to? We were showing the moment Mr. Will committed the murder. How could it have gone, indeed? Are you done with your inspection of the evidence? Yes, I'm finished. However, Your Honor, I'm missing a single piece of evidence. I'm missing a single piece of prosecutorial evidence. Your Honor, were you derelict in your duties? What? No, I dare not lick my duties. Who do you take me for? <laughs> no, Your Honor, no most people are in today's trial. This surveillance video is not amongst the evidence you laid out for me. Hmm. I've read Mr. Faraday's whole bag with me from the crime scene. Maybe the tape is still somewhere at the crime scene? There's something wrong here. Something about this missing piece of evidence. Pray that me to find the answers I seek. The pain of the visit to the scene of the crime, Finite Lobby Number 2. Oh! Look at this strapping man. Whoever who could he be? September 10th, 6 a.m. Finite Lobby Number 2. Wonder who this man could be. Look at this man. Hmm, this is sick to bed, but who is he with? Never seen that officer before. So did you find it? No, not yet, and I've looked everywhere. I see. Well then, please continue with the search. Understood, I'll continue the search. Hey, so you're the one renting this show. That seems like you should be even allowed at the crime scenes. How dare you, just who do you think you are? And there he goes. What's that all about? And who was that man just now? I really was. I've never seen a more infinite officer in my life. Does he even know that we're standing right here behind him? I know you're standing right behind me. What do you want, kids? I like you were paying attention after all. Of course I was. I have eyes in the back of my head. Ah, so the mirror just for vanity's sake. So I'm gonna keep an eye on who or what is behind him at all times. Somebody took to bed. Who was that rude man just now? The guy came here from the public Zing Fei to study. It's Agent Ling. Trying to do everything he can. For the lost honor of his family. He's traveling the world to study different philosophies of detainment from scratch. Visiting various police departments around the world. He's a lot of dedication. So there's a rookie cop. They sent a strong grudge of some sort from him. The guy is more useful than Gumshoe, even if he is rude. He serves a lot of guts coming to this country and giving the prosecutors a hard time. I agree, or I can think of one young lady in that statement also applies to. Anyway, who's the agent looking for to to bed? I knew that little girl was poking around the Finite Lobby Number 1 as well. Like I said before, it's nothing, nothing to do with the two of you. <laughs> I highly doubt that it has nothing to do with me. Fine, if there's a game I must play, then I'll take this opportunity. Draw out what he's hiding and what's happening in this room straight from him. Well, talk to me then. Earlier you were in lobby number one, now you're here in lobby number two. You're quite the busy man, Detective Brad. Multiple returns to a crime scene rings about success. That's what we detectives say. I see. In that case, you wouldn't mind asked about what happened again, correct? I don't have anything left to say to you, boy. Boy, you'll see, I will draw my answer from you one way or another. Would I kill you to help us if we leave a tiny bit in our investigation? Leave Faraday's notebook. The judge earlier. That's help enough, don't you think? Ah. Uh, because we're asking you just for the moment for your operation. Don't push me, kid. Time of the murder. 
I guess once again what happened around the time of the crime. I refuse to answer. Anyone investigating do. It'll be a waste of time. Besides, how am I supposed to answer questions about things I don't know about? Things you don't know about. But you're supposed to know everything. You should. But is it possible? Maybe he doesn't know about the trick behind the piece of evidence. Try showing it to him. Maybe it would be the key to getting some answers from Detective Bad. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, man. Look at this. Look at this thing. Detective Bad. Do you know the existence of the item in this photograph? Hmm. <laughs> of course I did. It's my job to know everything related to the Gratz's case. In that case, may I ask you something? You know that the knife killed Mr. Faraday and the Sagaratsu's key are one and the same. What? That's impossible! Looks like he didn't know after all. The so evidence to which we call the Sagaratsu's key is actually a well camouflaged knife. Mr. Faraday was planning to use the Sagaratsu's key to prove that Mr. Rao is not the real Sagaratsu. Isn't that correct? I guess so. However, Mr. Faraday had no idea it was in fact a knife. He had to admit, neither one of us knew that fact. Neither of us knew, then no one in law enforcement knew either. How do I miss something as big as this? I noticed that this is a little while ago. You appear to be searching for something. Assume this key is what you're searching for. Yeah, that's right. Why are you searching for it? Because I promised Faraday. I promised that I'd protect that key with my life. After he was killed, the key disappeared from Faraday's evidence bag. Who would have thought that the key is what took Faraday's life? Took to bed. So we may find the truth. Please testify for me once more time. Alright. But it doesn't matter how many times I tell you about what happened. Nothing will change. Time of the murder. Took to bed. As you please testify once more for what happened in lobby number two and what you experienced in lobby number one. My answer is still the same. This is the last time I'm going to do this. That's fine, so I know there's one last time to clear everything up. Find the truth behind this case. Take the bad movements. So, lobby number one, talking with you. We're talking about some trivial things. We heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to re reconvene. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out in the hallway together. It's all you goofing around there. We all ran into number. In the lobby number two. Sounds like the exact same story you told us before. Indeed, or I feel like we've yet to draw out all the information we can. Hmm. Okay, we'll just take this all slow. Why did Miss Yu choose lobby number two? Number one, I mean. Not two, number one. Enter me. Who knows, she just said she had something she wanted to talk to me about. We walked down lobby number one together, that's all. The answer remains the same as before, I see. Talking about trivial things. What kind of trivial things? I was hoping you could expand on what exactly you were discussing with Miss Hugh. Trivial stuff, nothing important. That's for me to decide. Alright, I suppose that's for him to decide. Moving on then. <laughs> well, never mind. Heard the gunshot. Until you heard the gunshot, do you notice anything else was out of the ordinary? I didn't hear any other strange sounds. Until that gunshot. The gunshot took the bed recently heard this one from the murder. But given that other piece of evidence, an entirely different meaning. I see you please amend your testimony with that statement just now. Sure. I didn't read these strange sounds to that gunshot. Ledger seems very, very convinced. Hmm. Oh. The balloon popping. Right? Maybe?
the balloon, right? Yeah. Objection! The balloon. Detective Bad, does this balloon fire remind you of anything? It's the same color as when Kay was holding. Ah, oh, so you knew about that girl's balloon. Yeah, I was sitting with her up in the gallery. During the recess, just before we split up, I filled that balloon up for her. The maze already surmised this piece did indeed come from Kay's balloon. So, what about the balloon? I wonder if you might remember hearing this balloon pop at some point. What are you getting at? <laughs> this fragment was found in the hallway, right in front of lobby number two. Furthermore, the sound of this balloon popping the judge mistook as a gunshot. Oh, so the sound that the judge heard was not actually a gunshot, huh? On top of that, his honor heard the balloon pop. About 20 minutes before the trial was about to be in Yes, me designers heard the balloon pop in the hallway. We were in lobby number one, check your bed. We were in lobby number one at that time. You are close enough you should have heard the balloon popping as well. So? Well, don't give me a so. We just proved that there is a flaw in your testimony. The cracking of the truth is louder than the sound of your sweet naivety cracking. Since you kids don't seem to know me, Philly went on something. You ever stop to think why doors and walls of this place seem so rugged? It's because they were designed to keep secrets from being leaked. What? What is that supposed to mean? The doors and walls of this super thick. The window panes are double layered. Top it all off. Even the curtains are made of a special sound absorbing material. Then you mean? There should have been inside the number one. There's no way I could have heard that sound. No. Uh, I knew mean, that's what he was going to say. I mean, the stuff you test is completely useless. The rooms are soundproof, and of course you wouldn't hear any sign of a struggle. Uh, that's why it's only natural. They didn't hear the balloon popping. How do you get it, kids? Well, I thought we were supposed to be the ones finding flaws in his logic. Not the other way around. The other way around. It's not possible to hear the sound of a balloon popping in front of lobby number one. However, if I examine this situation in reverse, the person standing in the hallway should not be able to hear the real gunshot either. It's like the gunshot who claims to have heard it while standing in the hallway. Detective Bad. This is the case, how do you exactly did you hear the gunshot? What do you mean, how? I just did. <laughs> it would appear that you get to realize a contradiction in your own words. Oh, how so? Rooms are as soundproof as you say they are. But now the sound of a gunshot into your ears. I see what you mean. I guess I'm more out of it from Faraday's murder than I thought. Which means that... What exactly, Miles? What in the end did it all prevail down to? It was down to this. There must be a reason. It's how detective bad and comfortable with a gunshot that theoretically couldn't have. Looks like they have seen the scene of the crime scene again, huh? See the crime scene? Wait, could it be... It's that ultra-strong perfume he wears since he spilled some of it. The window is open. Wah! Well, way too noisy. It's a fair that's video. How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? All of the logic. All of it. Well, you can smell the... You can smell the flowers because of her perfume. It's simply not possible for the killer to escape to the buried windows. Yet the fragrance of the perfume manager escaped in at lobby number one. Of course, corporeal things must move freely through these open barred windows. Could it be in the television? Hmm. Okay, how about the windows and the loud TV? Yes. And then what else besides the smoke and going in out of an open barred window? The answer is sound. So no matter how careful the killer was, the windows were open, the jig would open up. Since the windows in both the finite lobby number one and the hallway were open, 
I suppose how the sound of a gunshot could be heard in both locations. What was it? Was it in the TV? Actually? This is the evidence, the video. That shows the moment in which Mr. Bell killed the emergency staff member. It's not the gunshot left the impression on me when it was played during the trial. Maybe it should have been returned to Mr. Faraday's evidence bag for the recess. Brought back here. It disappeared after that time. And it's possible that the tape is still here in this broom. Eureka! The evidence... Missing evidence created for me. It's a gunshot that no one should be able to hear in the first place. Miles, what have you been thinking about? Stop wasting time thinking, let's get start looking again. It's not a waste of time to think, for I figured out where we should look. Where would that be? Maybe we should examine the television. The TV. Well, you kids have fun. Go ahead and examine whatever you like. I'm looking at this TV. What's in that tape player down there? The video player. It seems to be a video tape inside. Looks like it. The tape must have stopped on its own and reached the end. This tape could be the missing Fairlands tape. I suppose, but... To bed, would it be alright with you if I verified the contents of this video? Sure, knock yourself out. Right, thanks for riding to this and see what we have. If I remember it correctly, it's what a derail killing the embassy staff member. It should be at about the 30 minute mark from the start of the tape. Understood. It should be about right. Let's see. This, this is. Footage of Mr. Bell shooting the embassy staff member. I knew it. Mr. Group of Evidence, the friend's video was here all along. The sound. What's the meaning of this? Bruce Dr. Bad has figured out the truth source of the gunshot he heard. Doesn't think we figured out the trick upon this double murder. Do you mean that you figured it all out then? Yes. All I have to do now is show the gunshot detective bad. To the gunshot detective bad and jump shoe heard was, and do where they heard it from. Eh, fine, in that case, tell me what you've reduced. And through where? Eureka! I... Okay, I think it's fairly simple at this point that the sun went through the window. Okay, okay, I'll do the window then. I thought it was the TV that we're gonna do the one at a time, but no, it's both. The, the, the video on the, the window. Okay. The window and the door and the windows to the crime scene, namely this room that we're in, were closed. The killer could have used the gun and no one would have been the wiser. That's true. The square has didn't be well designed for such a thing, as it were. However, what happened in the reality was take the gun shoe, take the bed, and miss you. I'll tell you from my heart the gun shot. Although the windows in lobby number one and number two in the hallway are open. Naturally, the people on those locations could hear it. Ah, uh, but then, why would the criminal open the window in the first place? To have the gunshot to be heard, I suppose. But correct, that's the only logical conclusion we can draw from this. But why is that necessary in the first place? I'm gonna realize there, Miles. I would demand satisfaction. Very well. But the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of a certain fact. What does the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of? When the murder took place. He wanted to fabricate the time of death to the precise questions. Use the gunshot and friends for you to do so. So that's why the tape was rough running. You mean the gunshot I heard was from this video? Yes, which means murder really occurred at an earlier time than we thought. It must have been during the recess, but before Detective Gumshoe was on guard duty, someone had no alibi for that time period. Plan this crime out in advance. Bruce is the real killer. Give me my juice back, thank you. Mr. Edgeworth! Yes, what is it? 
And she was asking for you. She's in the courtroom. She says she's identified the murderer, but she wants to clarify something. Like Miss Yu is still investigating something. Understood. Please tell her that it'll be right over. I'll come along. I want to hear what she has to say. I pray that the time has come. Uncover the truth. To be continued. That's fine. To be continued. Alright. Next time, we will go talk to you and finally get down to all of this. All this mess. Alright, so until next time.